Remember, the Israelites were slaves. Some of us in here, your ancestors were enslaved by others of our ancestors in here. This is a reality that has lived down through the ages to the Israelites and to others around this world who decided that it was right and okay to enslave another. It is not. And yes, I'm talking about the physical enslavement, but sometimes today we still try to enslave each other, don't we? We try to do it every time that we talk about or behind somebody's back, amen? Every time that we try to bring somebody down, every time that we think someone else isn't worthy enough, amen? We enslave another, but guess what? God is not having it. And any of us in here who have felt that we have been enslaved, because indeed I believe that all of us have in one way, shape, or form, some of us it's been from addictions, hasn't it? Some of it has been from past pains that have just eaten away at our heart and our mind and our souls. That people we love might have done things to us that just should never even be thought of, let alone done. Amen? Some of us have been bullied. Some of us have been the bully. And I guarantee you that being the bully is as bad as being bullied. Amen? In a different way. Right? Because both you lose your soul in. God was talking to a people who had been enslaved. Anybody in here who identifies as queer or other has been enslaved in one form or another by churches and by politicians. But friends, what does God say? I love you. I love you. And no one is going to keep you enslaved anymore. You are the only one who can do that. But I don't know about you, last time I checked, God was bigger than any of us. Amen? God was bigger than any of us. And if we indeed believe in that God who said, I love you, you are not getting away from me. You are not getting away from me, so quit trying. (laughs) Okay, you can try, but waste your time. And God says, forget about what's happened. Forget about. Forget about that time in Egypt when you were told you were unworthy. Forget about the time that you were enslaved and were told that the only thing that you were good for was fill in the blank. You you, you hear me? God says, forget about what's happened for I have something new for you. Now, of course, I am not saying to be absolutely oblivious from the past because we learn from the past so we don't make the same mistakes in the past. But how many of us stay living in the past? Because it's more comfortable, even if it's painful. Even if it's painful, so many of us stay living in the past. Because it's comfortable. And it's a lot of work. It's a lot more work to be a free person. Isn't it? It's a lot more work to be a free person in the world. Because, you know, I mean, there's this warped sense of at least somehow, some way, you at least know what you have to do the next day if somebody else owns you in one form or another. It is hard work to be a free person in God, isn't it? It is not easy to say, I am a follower of Jesus and I will follow you to the promised land. Amen? It's not easy. It's not easy. But it is good. It is really good. Be alert and be present. I am going to make something brand new. Don't you see it? You know me, I always have to go and like tell you some good fun trivia about scripture. Well, <laughs> don't you see it? Don't you know it is another one. The word know that is used in there means that you humans have the opportunity to absolutely know it. It's not something that some priest has to tell you or some pastor has to tell you. This is something that is being offered a new way to you and to me. And you and I have the opportunity if we open our eyes, to see it, to know it, to feel it, to touch it. Amen? Amen. 
if we open our hearts and our minds and our souls to it. You know, all this is just like, woohoo! You know, thousands of years ago this was written and how true it is still is for us today. How true this message is still for us this day. Do not fear, for I call you by name. All of this sits in the context of this week, doesn't it? I don't know about you all, but there's a part of me that feels now that I feel, I feel that possibilities are still possible. I feel a weight lifted. I feel a weight lifted of that, yes, indeed, my voice matters. My voice really matters in the world. Our voices really matter in the world. Amen? I know we've believed it, but sometimes when you're told for so long it can't, you kind of go along with it just to make things simple. But you know what? I I think that the, I, I love the fact that scripture, our church, and the world kind of are all coinciding, walking the same journey with each other. Amen? Because when God says all things are possible, it's really kind of cool to know that the rest of the world believes it too. And you know, even if the rest of the world doesn't believe it, we believe it. Amen? We believe it. Amen? We believe it. Amen. You know, it, it really came home to me about how powerful our lives are and how powerful everything that you do, everything that you do has an effect on somebody else. And the little things that you might take lightly have an effect on somebody else. How many of you watched Prayers for Bobby last night? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that a great thing for MCC? And it was a true story. And Reverend Witzel was my supervising pastor in Concord, California. The pastor, I, I came a couple years after that and studied with him. And it wasn't a huge church. And Walnut Creek and Concord, for those of you who do not know, is kind of like the Orange County of the Bay Area. It really is. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. (laughs) Here's a tangent. I was living in Santa Cruz, which was about an hour from there, and I commuted to do my internship in Concord. Some people are laughing, they know Santa Cruz. Well, Santa Cruz is the haven for radical lesbian feminists. <laughs> Act up, queer nation. And I was on staff in an Orange County type church. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was like, can you relate, Reverend Anetta? <laughs> You know, how do you tell them, yeah, I was arrested yesterday for civil dis... Oh, man, that was a trip. (laughs) But in that context, in that context, a mother found MCC. A mother whose son had found MCC, but didn't believe enough in the message that God really honestly loved him. For those of you who don't know the story, this was based in the late 70s, early 80s, and a teenage boy in Walnut Creek, California, was gay. Told his very religious mother, who tried to pray it out of him, sent him away to be prayed out of him, kept preaching to him that he was a sin and an abomination and he couldn't reconcile it because he loved his mother and his family so much. He went away to Portland for a while and met someone, came back home, and it started all over again. And he went back again to Portland. It was definitely depressed. Duh. 